figure shows the typical variation of lift coefficient of an airfoil versus angle of attack. Here, this is the CL alpha curve for a positively cambered aerofoil. So, there are seven parameters which are very significant in this graph. First one is stall angle. We will be denoting it with alpha st. The next is maximum lift coefficient. We will be denoting it with CL max. Third is zero lift angle of attack. We will be denoting it with alpha naught or alpha at l equals to zero. Fourth is ideal lift coefficient which is CLI and the ideal angle of attack which corresponds to this ideal lift coefficient. Usually this is the angle of attack and the lift coefficients at cruising condition. Sixth is lift coefficient at alpha equals to 0. We will be denoting it with CL0. Then the seventh is the lift curve slope of this air file. We will be denoting it with C small l alpha or A0. So, our interest would be to understand these parameters and few more things about this curve. So, let us investigate one after the other. So, this curve has the stalling angle which is denoted by alpha st. Stalling angle is the angle at which the aerofoil stalls that is the lift coefficient will no longer increase with increasing angle of attack. So, the corresponding, so the maximum lift coefficient corresponds to the stalling angle. Then we have zero lift angle of attack. Then lift coefficient that is the ideal lift coefficient at the ideal angle of attack which is the cruising angle of attack as well or the angle of attack at cruise. And CL0 is the lift coefficient at zero angle of attack. So, this is the lift curve slope of the airfoil. It is denoted by A0 or DCL by D alpha also. So, here the lift curve slope is positive, whereas as we go here, this is a positive slope. So, here CL alpha is greater than zero. Whereas, as we start to increase the angle of attack, the lift curve slope starts to decrease and at a particular angle of attack, the lift coefficient will ceases to grow further. So, so, at this particular angle of attack alpha st, the lift curve slope that is CL alpha becomes equals to zero. Whereas, after that, if we try to further increase the angle of attack, the lift coefficient will start to decrease. So, the lift curve slope here is less than 0. So, this angle at which we get the lift curve slope is 0, CL value is maximum, is called stalling angle or it is also termed as the critical angle of attack. So, these parameters are critical to identify the performance of an airfoil. So, there are certain important things that we must note. So, there are certain important things to note. The first is the stall angle is the angle of attack at which the airfoil stalls. That is the lift coefficient will no longer increase with increasing angle of attack and it corresponds to CL max.
the stall angle is directly related is directly related to flight safety since the aircraft will lose the balance forces in a cruising flight if the angle of attack is above the stalling angle and if the stall is not controlled that means the pilot must lower the angle of attack so if it is not controlled properly the aircraft may enter into spin or it may crash so in general higher the stall angle higher the stall angle the safer is the aircraft does a high angle of stall is suit in aerofile selection typical stall angles of majority of airfoils lies between 12 to 16 degrees this means that the pilot is not allowed to increase the angle of attack more than 16 degrees therefore aerofile which has the highest stall angle is more desirable so these are important points related to alpha st now things relating to cl max cl max basically represents the maximum capacity the maximum capacity of an airfoil to produce non dimensional lift coefficient which is denoted by cl max that is the capacity of an aircraft to lift a load example that is the weight so cl max occurs at alpha equals to alpha st the stall speed that is vs is inversely proportional to root of cl max higher cl max means lower stall speed thus the higher cl max results in a safer flight therefore higher maximum lift coefficient is desired in an aerofoil selection process let's discuss zero lift angle of attack so at this angle of attack the lift is equal to zero okay a typical number for alpha not is around minus 2 degrees when no high lift devices is employed however when a high lift device is employed such as minus 40 degree flaps or minus 50 degree flaps the alpha not increases to about minus 14 or minus 15 degrees design objective is to have is to have higher alpha not in bracket you write higher alpha not means more negative since it leaves the capacity to have more lift at zero angle of attack this is essential for a cruising flight since the fuselage center line 
is aimed to be level for variety of flight reasons such as comfort of passengers. Let's move on to the ideal lift coefficient. Ideal lift coefficient is the coefficient at which drag does not vary significantly with the slight variations of angle of attack. So, CD does not vary much. This is very critical in aerofile selection since the lower drag coefficient means lower flight cost. So, we get this lower CD when we operate at ideal lift coefficient which leads to lower cost. Thus, the design objective is to cruise at flight situation such that the cruise lift coefficient is as close as possible to the ideal lift coefficient. The typical value for CLI for general aviation aircraft lies between 0.1 to 0.4. This is for subsonic aircrafts, subsonic general aviation aircraft. Whereas for supersonic aircrafts, it lies between 0 0.0.01 and 0 0.05 that's for supersonic aircraft. The angle of attack corresponding to this CLI is called the ideal lift coefficient angle of attack. Now let's move on to the ideal angle of attack. So, the angle of attack corresponding to ideal lift coefficient is this ideal angle of attack. So, usually the wing setting angle that is IW is approximately set it to, it is very often is selected it to the wing setting angle which is alpha set as alpha I. Since it will result in a minimum drag. So, this corresponds to the minimum drag. The minimum drag corresponds to the minimum thrust. Which means the minimum flight cost. Typical value of alpha i lies between 2 degree to 5 degree. Thus, such an angle will be an optimum candidate for the cruising angle of attack. So, very often the designers take alpha i equals to alpha cruise. Now, let us move on to CL0. CL0 is the lift coefficient at alpha equals to 0 degree. From design point of view, the more CL0 is the better. So, more CL0 is better from design point of view. Since it implies we can produce a positive lift even at zero angle of attack. Thus, the more CL0 is better. Now, let us move on to the lift curve slope CL alpha. The lift curve slope is another important performance feature of an airfoil. The lift curve slope is the variation of lift coefficient with respect to change in angle of attack. The units of lift curve slope are degree inverse or radian inverse. Since the main function of the aerofoil is to produce lift, higher the slope, the better is the aerofoil. So, that high slope means at a small angle of attack we can achieve larger lift coefficient. So, higher the slope, 
the better the aerofoil the typical the typical value of lift curve slope is around 2 pi per radian or about 0.1 per degree it implies that for 1 degree of change in the aerofoil angle of attack the lift coefficient will be increased by 0.1 times the lift curve slope may be found by the following empirical equation 